Hey guys, it's Troy. Got another pen mail day here today. Wanted to share with you some of my latest acquisitions and also clue you in to an upcoming project that I've got. Um, what I'm doing is, uh, this is not the only pen mail. I had one on Saturday as well. So I'm going to combine Saturday together with today's pen mail and to show you some of the new things that I've gotten. Uh, let's see. First and foremost, let's go look at what came in the mail. Let's go ahead and just do the today stuff um, because I can. One of the things I got was a new Waterman. You know that I collect Watermans. Uh, kind of into Waterman. Well, this one was actually a pen pencil set. So you see I've got uh, the pencil still in the box that came with it. It's an old box, probably from the 60s, perhaps. Uh, got the mechanical pencil and some leads along with it. This was the pen that came in it. Now, I'm not finished working on it. I've already polished up the barrel and I've polished up the cap, so they look really, really nice. But what happened was, um, you know, I got this. The the person I bought it from did not know what model it was, so I did a little bit of research. It looks like a C slash C or CC model. Um, but it's a little bit different when I started to research it looks exactly like a CC model with the exception of now when you take this apart there's a reason why this is not on here this is the little squeeze converter thing you may be familiar with those from other pens uh, maybe from some Parkers uh, maybe from some even some wing songs nowadays uh, still you can get those but it's got that little squeeze converter um, let's see pilot includes those with their Metropolitan uh, sometimes. Well, this uh, ink sack is a new one and it's still drying. So I haven't tried out the pen obviously because the sack cement is not hard yet. I just checked it a few minutes before this video so it's not quite ready but the idea is this thing will slide over and instead of being able to uh, use a lever uh, you just squeeze to fill the ink sack. So um, I got this all cleaned up nice. Um, the interesting thing is you've got the feed here. That feed extends all the way to right here. So <laughs> the feed itself is like this long, which uh, you know is not usual, but that's the way I've seen in a couple of uh, Waterman pens. So we'll see how that writes when I get the chance, uh, when it's uh, the sack is, uh, cement is hardened and I get to fill it and I get to write with it. It does have a gold nib on it, so I'm hoping it will do well. So that showed up just today and I got the chance to work on that. Um, you know what, the next thing I got today I'm going to save just because I can. Uh, on Saturday I did uh, get another order in uh, from Anderson Pens and they still had their clearance section called Last Call. And I went back and I picked up a few other things, took advantage once again of the free shipping, uh, picked up some more notebooks, um, I'm not going to bother dragging those out, but I picked up some more ink, I uh, picked up this Franklin Christoph Dark Chocolate, which is uh, a black ink. Uh, let's see, I picked up some noodlers, um, this is, uh, let's see, uh, it's their Summer Tan um, so uh, Summer Tanager, I think is what they call it. It's an orange ink. Matter of fact, I got some uh, writing samples to show you what those look like because I put those in a couple of pens already. Uh, they had some, uh, for those of you who use Schaefer pens, um, they, they had some cartridges they're trying to get rid of. Not colors I would generally get, but I've got women in the house with Schaefer's, so I got some pink, uh, I got some brown, and I got some orange. And I know the uh, orange actually my son might actually like in his Schaefer's in <coughs> Omos. I had some. Uh, international Standard uh, short Omos cartridges, so I picked those up fairly cheap. Uh, let's see. I picked up for just a couple of bucks. Uh, $3 for shipping was more than the cost of the pens itself. Uh, those blister packs that you would find for like a dollar back in the 70s and 80s at your dollar stores. Um, there was one for a wherever that had a, uh, a, a stick ball, it had a clickable ballpoint pen, uh, and it had a fountain pen all together. So it had a green cartridge 
cheapo fountain pen. I only picked it up just to have it in my collection. Now, we've already chucked the stick ball in the clickable uh, because I didn't feel like bothering to put in some uh, cartridge refillers for the, the clickable. And the stick ball was one of those you just chuck when you're done. And those weren't going to write unless I spent a lot of time with it. I'm not into ball points anyway, so into file 13 they went. So I got this thing right here. It's just green. It's got a steel nib, fairly inexpensive nib, uh, fairly cheap cap. We're talking, you know, these pens used to retail this whole set for a dollar. So what I got to do is I'm hoping uh, to find the correct ink cartridge that will fit on this old wherever. Not really sure which one would fit. I'm hoping maybe those Schaefer cartridges even. I'll find out. But that was uh, something that showed up on Saturday as well. Wasn't really even going to talk about that, but my son said, no, you're going to tell people about it. All right, fine. Uh, and then today, um, I purchased from another collector. I uh, got a chance to get my first Omos. There is uh, the Omos Bologna Caramello. And uh, I can tell you that it writes just as pretty as it looks. You got that nice clip to it. Um, you know, Omos, having gone out of business, an Italian manufacturer, not too long ago, I know that a company has purchased a lot of their bar stock for uh, their celluloid and some of their tools and are trying to um, uh, bring a brand back, possibly. But I do know that um, Armando uh, Simone Club has purchased all their stuff. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but. Whether or not the Omos name comes back, I've been trying to get an Omos for a while. I had some bids out, and I just lost a few bids uh, on a couple of Omoses just within the past couple of days. Just yesterday, actually. Uh, and uh, one of them fairly inexpensively. I should have gone a little higher in my bidding. But, anyway, I got this beauty right there. So, it is a uh, converter, cartridge converter pen. Now, from what I was told, this particular pen is one of the lower-end uh, Omos pens, and it was sold through a U.S. retailer, Farney's, made for the American market, and I inked that sucker up with some Papier Plume Violet, just because I could. So you got that nice uh, gold tone section. Um, the pen is not extremely heavy to, to uh, post it does not back weight that pen seriously it holds very nicely in the hand um, what else can I tell you about it it's a very wet writing pen very smooth and very very wet so I'm not going to do a full review I'm just showing you what I got so uh, that was my first Omos I'm hoping to perhaps acquire a few more models and we'll see where that goes now, I'm going to open up this book here and show you my writing samples. That's why I held off on doing this, because I wanted to get to the OMOS first. Uh, now, I can tell you that the inks I'm going to show you are not necessarily reflective of pens, except for the uh, Bologna uh, from OMOS. That's what the uh, Summer Tanager uh, Noodler's ink looks like. And this is what the Franklin Christoph Dark Chocolate ink looks like. This is what the Papier Plume Violet ink looks like. And that is indeed the writing sample from that Omos. So I get a chance to play with my Omos. All right, let me tell you something about what I'm planning uh, to do. One of the things, my heart is towards um, the newbie coming into the fountain pen community or the hobby or just plain getting a pen not knowing what to do with it. I give away a good many pens. I know other guys who give away a good many uh, low-end or starter pens to people and that's actually um, done well to get other folks interested in fountain pens. Uh, it's actually rekindled the desire or the memories of writing with a fountain pen for some folks who grew up writing with them. So, a lady at my church. I gave her just a Jin Hal 599. Just this weekend, uh, she had she sent a home uh, to me a, a pen that she had. It's just a Jin Hao 250 through my mother-in-law, who was over hanging out with her, their friends. And I, I got it, got a hold of it, worked on it, cleaned it up. It was skipping. It was hard starting. So I was able to tear it apart, 
clean it up real good, put it back together, uh, I was able to smooth it out. So now that uh, pen that she only paid a dollar for writes a pen, like a pen that costs a hundred dollars. So um, her desire to do fountain pens was rekindled because of a little Jinhao 599 pen and I've run across several other people who have also been buying more pens uh, who are enjoying writing with the fountain pens I've been giving them that are real happy I've mailed some out to people just recently and made some folks happy so what I've decided to do is for people who don't know much about pens and like I didn't when I first got one I had an old cartridge pen that I went ahead and threw cartridges in until I couldn't buy cartridges anymore. And then I bought a Waterman that came with a converter and some cartridges, and I didn't really know what to do with it. Uh, I had to figure it out and play with it on my own. But I wanted to do a video. And one of the videos that I wanted to do was basically a welcome to the fountain pen hobby or having ownership. And to go through and explain the parts of a pen to go through the filling mechanisms, each one, uh, that are common today, not every one, but I figure I'd go through the cartridge converter process, that uh, I'd even do a lever filler. Uh, I would use both a cartridge and a converter and, and show those, and uh, show what piston fillers look like and how they work, that kind of thing as well. Uh, but I've got a five-page script here that uh, I've put together. I've done voiceovers for radio and TV for years. I figure I can cut a nice voiceover for that and use that as a narrative. I've done training videos, long form training videos, so I know that I can do voiceovers for that and produce a video. So um, that's one of the things I plan on doing. And I've already bought a URL. One of the things, beware, you buy a URL, you're going to get spammed if you don't make it private. I'm not going to pay the extra $7 or so to make it private. I just forget that. But my inbox every day since then has been spammed with people trying to sell me on web service, web hosting, uh, let's see, web page authoring, uh, e-commerce, not even knowing what my website's going to be for. But uh, just to let you know, the, the URL is going to be I gave you a pen.com or .info. I bought both URLs and I'm going to produce a page that's going to have uh, a welcome, some explanation, and a produced video that they can watch and they can get a tutorial on fountain pen ownership. And I want to make this so that anybody can refer people to this particular page. I'm going to try not to make it uh, personal Although, when I'm narrating, I can tell you I'm going to have, you know, this is what I personally have done. This is what, uh, in my experience. So I'll throw a few of those in, but I'm going to try to make it as generic as possible. I do not plan on it involving me. I don't, hopefully you won't be seeing my face at all. I plan on just showing it uh, and f filming what actually happens in the mechanics, some pictures, uh, so, anyway, that's my project, and I've already gotten started on it. Like I said, bought the URL, written the script, and I've been thinking out, I've been collecting some of the pictures that I wanted to put into the video, as well as uh, planning out what kind of video uh, capture I'm going to do. So, that's uh, my latest project. Hopefully, that'll be helpful to newbies and to potential newbies that you can refer people to that URL once that page is up and running. Don't know how long it's going to take. It depends on uh, my workload, my family load, all that happy stuff. So that is forthcoming and it's just because I love the hobby and I want to help other people that may be just getting into it. The other thing I want to do is to uh, produce a few business cards of it. You know, these are ones that you can just print on your computer and hand out. That's fine, but you know, I've also investigated a little bit to get some professionally printed, um, and uh, I'm hoping that I can actually save the graphic for it and be able to give that to anybody so that they can get some cards uh, printed up as well. And all it will be about is you know, uh, congratulations on getting your first fountain pen, uh, and whether you're new to it or you're just rekindling the desire to use one, I wanted to give you a tutorial. And one of the things with a video too, I'm going to stress, is if you're given the pen by somebody who's a collector or an enthusiast, get back with that person in order to get some advice. 
Simple as that. So that if you gave the pen, I'm going to advise them to talk to you so that they can get a little more information about where to go. Maybe, uh, maybe what other pens are available? Um, what pen might work better for me? If I have a question about, I don't like the way this one writes, uh, or uh, let's see, I want to go to a next level pen, what would you recommend? And so you two can uh, establish perhaps a rapport, uh, and they can have a place for a repository of wisdom to pour unto them. Anyway, that's it. That's uh, that's what I've got here today. My my uh, pen mail, and I'll let you know how the Waterman writes eventually. Still on the way. I've got a, a wherever button filler that's on the way. I've got a couple more Watermans, um, and I've got a Parker 21 on the way, uh, and I've got a Jin Hao 911. Only because somebody asked me to do a review of that particular pen, so I ordered one, and that's all I got now. Thanks for watching. Bye.